that we will get three cuts. Yeah. Uh, but the economy is is um, really looking very good. If you recall, so it could be less. You, uh, could be, could possibly be less. Okay. But that's not necessarily a bad thing for Asia because you know um, stronger stronger growth uh, coming from the U.S. is actually a positive for Asia. Um, and if you look at um, uh, at uh, what what matters for Asia is that rates have peaked. Right? Rates have peaked, which means that uh, U.S. dollar strength hopefully has peaked. Yeah, not going to get any stronger from here. Yeah. Understood. What are you telling clients about how they should approach mainland Chinese equities? Oh, that's a that's a tough one because you know everyone is pivoting away from China, and that has led to a bit of uh, dislocation in the market. Fundamental investing is not quite working because um, of the structural outflow from China. There's a lot of policy uncertainty, there is a lot of regulatory uncertainty, and frankly, people are just giving up. They're saying, you know, this is a low ROE market, and low ROE, I mean low return on effort market. Oh, I like that. <laughs> so, um, so I think that's what we've been seeing yeah. over the past um, couple of years. But I think the reset is largely done. We have seen a, a huge increase in equity risk premium in China. We've seen valuations come up a lot to mm. adjust for the you know, growth, lower growth expectations. Mm. So I, I think we are almost there. Okay. I don't know how much more of the structural outflow we'll see, but what is encouraging is that the Chinese government is starting to put a flaw in the domestic market. So for patient capital, if there is a recovery coming in the second quarter, and if it is supported by uh, the stimulus efforts, by the leadership, then what sectors should we reallocate capital into? Um, you know, in China, it's always go with the policy, right? Where is the policy heading? So there's a lot of... Um, uh, um, I mean, this big theme about SOE reforms, right, where they are encouraging uh, SOEs to uh, improve their efficiency, improve shareholder returns. And frankly, if you look at the best performing factor over the last couple of years, it's been dividends. It's been companies that have been able to improve shareholder returns primarily by distributing a lot more dividends. You make a point that you like Chinese companies that are able to reinvent themselves, mm. but all the positive trends you just talked about, that's not reinvention. That's what publicly listed companies should be doing in any case, no? <laughs> yes, that's yeah. true. That's true. Um, that's just one big theme that uh, I think a lot of investors are playing. But, you know, in China, you have to go for alpha. Find these alpha ideas, right? People, uh, companies that are not just solely dependent on the China macro because who knows that, how that's going to head, mm. right? So I think you need to look for companies that can, can help themselves they can reinvent themselves, whether create markets, new markets overseas, or improve, um, improve their operating efficiency such that they are throwing out you know, um, uh, earnings catalysts. And thirdly, you know, by being the winners of industry consolidation. Mm. So that is where I'll be focusing my efforts on. Mm. Because it's too hard to call. I mean, macro, it's, it's a bit difficult to call and can be sometimes very binary. Yeah, yeah. A huge